Today we're going to continue our study on the presentation of the gospel. Last Wednesday night we studied Genesis all the way uh, through showing the uh, fall of man and then showed in Romans uh, how Christ is the reconciler. In other words, sin brings death, sin brings separation as it's written in Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Sin separates us from God. That's a spiritual law. You're not going to change that. It's fixed. Uh, sin, when we sin, it brings death. Yes, yes. So there's two things. Sin brings death. Uh, sin brings separation from God. This yes. is so critical. So most people are probably wondering, why am I here? Why, why am I created? What is my purpose? It, is my purpose just to... You know, wake up in the morning and get a shower and have some breakfast and, and go about my day. Well, obviously God wants you to have an abundant life. And having food and shelter and clothing is all His grace. Right? Amen. And so there's a purpose in life. Yes. And it has to begin with us individually having peace with God. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Yes? Yes. And so peace with God begins with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to look with me in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, that word justified simply means this, declared blameless. Mm. Not, not made blameless, Declared blameless. Now the declaration comes as a result of Christ offering his body and God accepting his, the blood that came from his crucifixion as full payment, catch this, full payment for my disobedience mm -hmm. and your disobedience. Mm -hmm. So once the sin debt is paid, there's no, the blame and the shame that came from your sin if, if you come to Christ, Christ pays it with his own blood. Because the law requires that without, it says this in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Okay? Without the shedding of blood. Now, you know, in the Old Testament, they gave sacrifices and, and they were required. So the sacrificial system was in place until Christ came. Okay, now Christ became the one sacrifice that made a way, made the way for men to be reconciled to God and for men to have their sin debt paid before a holy God. Okay, so uh, what is critical to understand that because you can't work your way to reconciliation. You can't work and do good, good things. And, and expect to be reconciled to God. Amen. So morality won't get you there. Religion won't get you there. Good works won't get you there. Amen. It's simply about Jesus Christ, His blood sacrifice, and, and God has offered Him as the one-time payment for all mankind's sin. But that gift, that sacrifice has to be received when you receive Jesus. Amen. You have to receive Christ as Savior. Amen. Okay? So our purpose here on this earth, and I'm going back to Romans 5.1, it says, therefore having been justified, and that, that word means declared blameless. Now, I unpack that just a little bit because I want you to understand the depth of the word justified in this context. It's a forensic term, meaning it's a legal term that is used to uh, in like legal situations. But Jesus has declared you, if you come to Christ, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about people that reject Christ. I'm, telling, I'm saying if you've come to Christ, expressed your faith in him and his blood sacrifice, then a declaration came from the throne room that says, Jesus says, 
I pay your sins. I have paid for your sin. Amen. Therefore, forgiveness is provided. Once for, for you, you got to catch this. Forgiveness is the spiritual solution for disobedience. In other words, it's the healing for sin. Amen. Now, now go in reverse with me. How does forgiveness come about? From God, it has to come through Christ. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. How can he say that with such audacity and such boldness? Because the world will tell you there's a million ways back to God. The scripture tells different. The scripture, Jesus is the only one who gave holy blood to pay for your sin debt. He, his blood was holy and his father was God. So his blood, he came as the Holy One. He came as the Anointed One. And when he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, God said, that's enough. It is finished. So what Christ did was accepted. And when you receive him, you receive his forgiveness because he's the only way to God. And why is that? Because he's the only one on earth with holy blood, and he's the only one that paid mankind's sin debt, and God the Father said, it's paid. It's paid in full. And therefore, he can justly say, therefore, having been justified by faith, declared blameless by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, catch this, peace with God. Now, if you were here Wednesday night, you learned that sin separates humans from God. Mm -hmm. And Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. So what I want you to understand is this faith is so critical for you to understand. You cannot understand the gospel until you deeply understand faith. I'd like to read this to you. In Romans chapter 4, verse 1, turn there with me. We're we're trying to connect us being declared blameless, us having peace with God, and this term called faith. Remember, it says, therefore, having been justified by what? By faith. We have peace with God. So we have to understand what this faith is. Okay? And I think the example here in Romans chapter 4 will help us understand deeply. So in Romans 4, 1, it says, what then shall we say? That Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Verse 3, for what Abraham, for what does the scripture say? Question mark. For what does the scripture say? Quote, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, the word righteousness in this context, here in this gospel, it, look up here for a second. It means right standing with God. Right standing. You can't have right standing with God unless you're at peace with God. With me so far? So it says... Abraham believed God. So now, now we're starting to see the critical thing. Abraham expressed his faith. And he said, I believe you, God. Amen. I believe you. Okay? So the connection between faith, being at right standing with God, being declared blameless by God. It says that in Romans 5, 1, therefore having, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on in verse 2, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace 
in which we stand and rejoice in the hope, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So, peace with God is God's purpose for you. God wants you to be at peace with Him. He wants you to have an abundant life. But as long as you're dragging the ball and chain of sin around, you will never know peace. You will stay in mental suffering. Everything you touch will go wrong. You'll stay broke. You'll stay undone. You'll stay upside down Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and perpetually sin without restraint. For without the presence of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, there is no peace. Mm -mm. Are you tracking me so far? Now, this does, what I just said needs just a little explanation. Good old-fashioned hard work and good stewardship can cause money to come to you. But the prosperity I'm talking about is not just financial provision. I'm talking about peace in your soul. Finding contentment with what God has given. For the Bible says that Godliness with contentment is great gain. But the prosperity I want you to understand is us being reconciled to God, our sins being forgiven, us carrying the gift of eternal life, being set free from the lake of fire, and having the hope of eternal life. Life. Yes. This is what this is why Christ came. He does not want you to close your eyes and enter the second death. No. He does not want you to be under the bus all the days of your life. It does God no no it, it doesn't bring glory to God. No. He does not want you to suffer mentally. Amen. And if there's no peace with God, you're going to suffer mentally. And you're going to make everybody around you suffer. Yes. Yes. So it, here it is in verse 3, Romans 4, 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So what do you see here that's really important? Belief. Okay? Belief is absolutely a necessity yes. with the Lord. Yes. Now, belief is the opposite of faith. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. Belief is the opposite of doubt. Mm-hmm. Pardon me. Belief is the opposite of doubt. So when you doubt God, what are you saying? I don't trust you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust you. Mm. You're not trustworthy. Mm. There's no worth in you. Now, what is worship? To attribute worth. If you go to a a theological seminary and you get a book off the shelf and you look up the word worship, it will say to attribute worth to God. Was it saying, I trust him. He's trustworthy. Okay? But when we doubt, we're saying, I don't believe you. You're not trustworthy. You see the danger of that? And do you see the benefit of saying, yes, you're the Almighty. Amen. You created everything. Yes. Who am I to doubt you? Yes. Yes. That will kill doubt, is when you are awestruck by the grandeur and the glory of our heavenly Creator. So what what's so what have you learned so far? That we have we have to trust him. Yes. Yes? We've got to have faith in him. Yes. We've got to ex- express our belief in him. Yes. Yes. Amen. I'll continue. It says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So now remember, Christ isn't on board here yet. Jesus has not come down, right, from heaven. 
But Abraham trusted God, and God said, that's going to put you in right standing because you're expressing, you're, you're expressing faith in me. Amen. Okay? You're expressing trustworthiness. You're saying, God, I trust you. So now in verse 4, 4-4, four, four, it says, Now to him who works, the wages, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. In other words, if, you, if you're a truck driver and you drive the, uh, the tractor trailer, well, at some point you're going to go back to the office and say, may I please have my pay, mm -hmm. right? I drove it 2,500 miles and you agreed to give me so much per mile and I, I'd like to have my pay. Mm -hmm. This is not, that's, that's work pay, right? Mm -hmm. Look what it says here. Now, verse four, now to him who works... Wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. In other words, the trucking company owes, has a debt to the driver for his hard work. Yes. Now, in other words, there's, the Bible is teaching a contrast here. Work, wages, grace, gift. Grace, gift. Okay. It says in verse 5, But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. That, that was me. Justified. That means when I came to Christ, I was the picture child of ungodliness. And when I turned to Christ, he, and I expressed my faith in him, he said, that's enough. And then the value of the blood of Jesus came rushing out of heaven's treasury and covered me in the blood of Christ. Amen. And the consequence of that was every sin that I have ever committed was washed Amen. and paid. Yes. And therefore I stand at peace with God. Yes. And, and if you try to bring that sin back, back to uh, remembrance, it's vanity because God has cast that sin as far as the east is from the west. Amen. It's not in his remembrance anymore. Amen. That's, what, that's why faith in Christ is so important because you cannot be reconciled to God without it. You cannot have forgiveness except through Jesus. Amen. And Jesus paid literally paid yes. and god the father accepted his blood as a one-time sacrifice for the whole world's sins you say how did that happen his blood was holy his blood was from heaven Amen. and he came here through a virgin birth and at the perfect time god sent forth his son yes. Yes. born of a virgin born under the law he came to redeem mankind yes. and to reconcile the world back to himself yes. Remember, the, in the in, in uh, Genesis, in Genesis two seventeen, you may you may freely eat from any tree in the garden, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. And if you do, you will surely die. Well, God's a promise keeper, and if you listen really close to uh, Genesis two seventeen, He gave him a command: do not eat. He gave him a promise: if you do, you will die. And both happened. So now, sin has been passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation and will continue to be passed down from generation to generation to generation and you result with an abundance of people on earth yet separate from God. And the consequence of that is you live on earth without God and without hope. Does that help you? So... In Romans 5, 1, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And let me tie this to purpose. The, Jesus came so that you might have life and have it abundantly. That you might not be chained to your sin. That you might not be on earth without God. That you might not be clamped by Satan's trickeries. 
And we've all probably, I'm sure we've all tasted it. The problem with that is he can, he can deceive you and you not know it. That's the real danger. You can be in steep deception led by Satan. Catch that. Led by Satan and not know it. It's called blindness. Spiritual blindness. Remember that world famous song. Amazing grace. I was blind. But now I see. That's what it's talking about. That's what that song is talking about. Mm -hmm. That spiritual blindness that came to all mankind Mm -hmm. and Satan's grip Mm -hmm. to hold them down and never be able to worship, Mm -hmm. never be able to obey, never be able to experience grace and peace and mercy. I'm telling you, in that life, you will not know peace. You will not know mercy. No. You will not know um, grace. No. No. It's all hard. Yes. Amen. It's all really hard. Yeah. 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 Do you see why it's so urgent to help others to come to know Christ and receive forgiveness of their sins? Because let me tell you something. Someone apart from Christ is in prison. And then going to the second death. They're in prison now, and then they'll be in the eternal prison later. This is urgent matter stuff. Are you feeling me? This is serious. So what is our purpose on life? Our purpose, God has sent us to be an ambassador for him. He has sent us to carry his holy gospel. He has sent us to be joy carriers, peace carriers. And, 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 And not just us. I mean, not not just for them, but God wants you to have an abundant life. Amen. And God on this earth, yes. and God wants you yes. to enjoy Amen. eternal life. Yes. He's not willing any should perish, no. No. but that all should come and receive the gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Thank you. Turn your Bible with me to St. John chapter ten, verse ten. I'm going to read 7 down. St. John chapter 10, verse 7. It says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Now stop right there. Put your finger on that. Saved from what? Saved from the lake of fire. Saved from the wrath of God. Saved from Satan and his prisons. I can go on. But those are the big ones. Saved from the wrath of God. That's what Jesus came. That's why he came. That's the reason he came. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. It's that blindness. That spiritual blindness that that a person experiences on earth without God in blindness. Wandering aimlessly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes being led by Satan. More often than not. Amen. Yes? yes? With a perpetual thirst to disobey God. Yes. With no consequence, no, no recognition of the consequence, either now or eternally. Amen. Feels good, do it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work like that. No. God has spiritual laws. Yes. God has uh, natural laws that govern the earth. If you hold a penny, if you're on the top of the Empire State Building and you drop a penny, is it going to go up or down? 
it goes down. Why? Because of the law of gravity. Yeah. Right? Yes. If you throw a match in gasoline, what's going to happen? It's going to blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? The laws are in place. Mm -hmm. If you throw a match in water, what's going to happen? It's going to go out. Yeah. Do you see? God's governance is on the earth, yeah. and His spiritual laws apply to everyone that's breathing. And you're not going to change it. It is our privilege to bow before Him yes. and to say, "Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. sir. Yes. You are the God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth." Yes. And I say, "Yes, sir," to Your will. Yes. I say, "Yes, yes sir," yes. to Your worship. Yes. I say, "Yes, sir," to yes. obedience. Yes. I say, "Yes, sir," yes. because yes. You are worthy yes. of my yes. worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so. It says here, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. That pasture is symbolic of peace, uh -huh. Uh -huh. provision, safety. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Look at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the, the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. The words of Jesus Christ. He cares for you. Yes, he does. He cares. The cross proves he cares. His Spoon teaching you the word declares to you, I love you. Yeah. I want you to understand. Yeah. I know it's a lot, yeah. but I'm going to step by step, spoon by spoon, raise you up in knowledge. Yes. Yes. That's what he's doing. Yes. He's teaching us yes. scripture yes. upon scripture, yes. line upon line, yes. so that we will become knowledgeable, yes. not wandering aimlessly without direction, yes. with no purpose in life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk aimlessly. I've done a lot of that, and I'm right back where I started. But the minute you set your heart on following Christ, look out. There'll be things come to you that you know not. There will be peace that you'll experience that you can't explain. There will be hope rise up within you that crushes doubt, fear, and, and all those things. Why? Because... All power in heaven and on earth has been given to Christ Jesus, our Lord. And what he has started in you, he sure enough has the power to see it through. Yes. And to guarantee you a safe arrival in heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. That is the hope of the gospel. Yes. He's alive. Amen. And he yes. cares about you. Yes. And there's no denying it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, I talked to you about these scriptures that I've given you this, this morning mm -hmm. are a summary of God's grace being explained through us expressing our belief, our expressing our faith in Him. And then because of that, if you belong to Christ, all things are possible to you. Possible. Nothing is impossible to God. And so if you're if you have received Christ, you are on earth, but you're not without hope. Amen. And you are on earth with God. Yes. At one time you were on earth without hope and without God. Yes. But through Christ Jesus, you are now on earth with God, with hope, with eternal life. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Yes. And if you believe that, that should change everything in your life. Change how you think, change how you sleep, change how you pray, change how you serve, change how you spend, change how you love, change how you steward, 
And I could go on and on until I see you next Sunday. But I want you to know that God wants you to have an abundant life. And he wants you to experience it now. Because when you got a frown on your face and you're under the bus, it's hard to tell someone how great God is. The, the brother or sister could go, well, what's he doing for you? And why you got your head in the bucket? Amen. Come on now. It's important to understand the Holy Gospel and to be eager to share it. Let me tell you something. God does not want, nor will he, use the unwilling. You will stay on that bench. But the minute you say, you're worthy, God. My time is yours, God. I raise both my hands. Send me. You can look for something to start to shake, rattle, and roll. Come on, church. All the resources. Look up here for a minute. All the resources of God, heaven, angels, Christ, the Holy Spirit is at is available to you. Amen. If you will just walk in his will yes. and with joy yes. and look to serve him for his pleasure, yes. not yours. Amen. There's no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for the sake of another. Yes. Jesus said that. Yes. Yes. So you, we have to make up our mind. Why? Why are we here? What is our purpose? What, what's going to carry on? And I've had my share of funerals, but I want you to know not one thing that they earned or that they gathered went with them. They closed the casket. Their clothes and maybe a wedding ring went. But that was about it. He's coming. Jesus Christ is coming. There is going to come a time that things that you know that were stable may not be there. The end times have prophesied shaking, shaking, and shaking. If there was ever a time for you to make up your mind if you're going to serve or be served, it's now. Amen. I'm sure of it. Amen. Thanks for letting me share. Amen.